Um, so let's see, Emily's asking about how to create the graph once you kind of have figured out what your equilibrium price and the quantity should be. I think that's the gist of her question. So, um, but I, and I said that, well, if you figured out what the equilibrium price is, you had to have begun at some point with a demand and supply equation. So I've got these here, and I just picked these out from page 80, question 13, um, where it gave me a demand and supply equation. So again, if I'm gonna solve this algebraically, then I know that the two quantities have to be equal to each other. So I can set the two equations equal to each other. Equals negative 17.5. And let me do this, um, 67.5 equals 18p. So then P would be <clears throat> this is a, I've been curious about this. I'm typing on the little number section that's on the right side of my keyboard, and I asked my undergrads if anyone ever uses those little numbers those those keys on that side of the keyboard for the home feature or the page up, page down, and I only use it for the numbers, but I always end up like inadvertently hitting the number lock button and then it bounces all over the place. So maybe that doesn't bug you guys, but it bugs me. So my price here must be $3.75. So am I kind of mirroring what you were doing? So you sort of use these equations to figure out what the, what the equilibrium price is? Right. Okay, so then I want to check myself whether I solved this equilibrium price correctly. So I'm gonna um, figure out what the quantities are. So I'll say equals 50 minus eight times that price. So I'm trying to figure out the quantity demanded now. 50 minus eight times that price of 375. So that quantity is actually not a dollar amount, but it's 20 units. And then, uh, let me do this over here. And then the QS, again, just to verify everything, is the negative 17.5 plus 10 times that. Also gives me 20 units. <clears throat> so I know I've solved this equation, set of equations correctly, that I've solved for the equilibrium price and quantity, because I get the same quantity for both of them. But Emily was ask, asking about making a graph of this, because all I have now is the this little set of numbers here. Which you do have, but you also have the equations too. And the nice thing about solving it first is that you can have a sense of how big you want your columns to be, or what you want your columns to look like. So um, I'm gonna first type in these equations here. So I'm gonna make a price column, which hopefully I'll, I'll try to make it where at some point it equals 375. So I'll just kind of start maybe at 25 cents, 50 cents. I'll go up in increments of those. And I get, I'll go up to $4. And so then let me type in my demand equations, kind of like the way that I did down here. So it was the 50 minus 8 times, and then I'll reference the cell that has the prices in it. Then again, these are not quantities. These are amounts. I'll do this with the supplies part of it too. Negative 70.5 plus 10 times that. I just told you yours should not be a currency. So um, I've got, if this price was only 25 cents, then there would be 48 units demanded and only negative 15 supply, which doesn't make much sense. But I can go in and kind of copy all these equations down. And if you didn't follow what I did there, you can go back and review the video or look at my little Excel tricks sheet. <clears throat> um, and things aren't going to be very interesting until at least here, because you can't have negative quantities of things. So I can just let me just move this up a little bit. <clears throat> but I've got all these potential different prices here. I'll make it a little bit bigger here too. And I have different quantities demanded. And again, all these equations are the same. It's still the same 50 minus 8 times this price. And all these little supply equations are the same negative 17.5 plus 10 times the price. And so if I wanted, to, so I've not got this in table form, which the book may have some examples of these numbers in table form. 
And again, I can kind of check myself and see that when the price is 375 here, I am getting that the quantity demanded is 20 and the quantity supplied is 20. So you get some verification that your math was correct because it's the same as the answers you get over here. But you want to graph these things. So the way I usually do it, and I think this is where I, I went into more detail in that video about actually once you get once you get this table, how do you make a graph out of it? So I think I went into more detail there. So I'm just going to do it kind of quickly here. And I'll just kind of do it like this. <clears throat> and it's upside down. So I have to go in and switch it because it has the prices on the horizontal and the quantities on the vertical. So I'm going to switch it around. And it's going to take me a second, especially because this thing is right on top. So these are my X's, these are my Y's, and these are these X's, and these are the Y's. Okay. So I've made my little picture, my little scatter plot here, based on the data in these columns. And again, you can you can verify when the price is 175. I had a zero supplied, which is the orangish line here, and 36 units wanting to be bought, which is way down here. And again, I see that this intersection seems to be happening at this price of 375 and a quantity of 20. So, um, does that kind of answer your question, Emily? Yes, you did. Thank you very much.